when working with Google Docs. Have you ever found a document that has information that would look so much better if you could figure out a way to put that information in, say, columns? But maybe you don't really want to add columns to the formatting of that document. Well, you could also maybe use tables. That would be another way to do it. But if you just want to do something kind of quick and easy, what you might decide to do is use tabs instead. Now, if you're coming from Word, this is a pretty familiar concept, um, but Word does have a few more options than Google Docs. So we definitely want to look at the types of tabs that are available in Docs, and then we want to see how we can add them to a document, either uh, before we start typing or after we start typing. And then we want to look at a manually created table of contents. Now in Word, again, there is a thing that's called a dot leader, which you don't really have in Docs. So we're going to look at a workaround so that you can create a table of contents and have those dots that lead from the left side of the page to the right side of the page. So hi, I'm Terry, one of the Consumer Technology Specialists for Mid-Continent Public Library, and let's look at Google Docs and how you can insert tab stops, tab settings, to your document. When you first open a new blank document in Docs, you might find that you don't have the ruler available. To see the ruler, you can go up to the menu bar to the third choice view, click on view, and then come down to the third choice again to click on show ruler. Now at this point, you can see that on the left hand side, you have kind of an arrow pointing down right at where the zero part of the ruler is. And that is where the left margin ends and where you could start typing. You'll also notice that there's something very similar on the far right side where you have another arrow pointing down at about six and a half inches showing that's where when you're typing, your text will go down to a new line and to the right of that is the right margin. Well, we can simply go to the ruler, find the spot where we want to add a tab, and do a right click right at that spot. So my first tab setting is going to be at a quarter inch. I'm going to do a right click. And when I do, I get a drop down of the three kinds of tabs. I can add a left tab stop, a center tab stop, and a right tab stop. Now the left tab stop is the one you're going to use most of the time because once it is set and you press the tab on your keyboard, you go to that spot in your document and then you type and everything just moves to the right, uh, kind of as normal as you type. Now a center tab stop, when it is set, and you again use your tab key to go over to it, as you start typing, you'll notice that the text is sort of adjusting so that when you finish typing, the center of what you have typed is right along, right in line with that center tab. And then the right tab is even kind of more interesting in that when you tab over to it and start typing, it looks like your letters are actually moving backwards on the page because the intent of the right tab is to have your text stop in line with that right tab. So the more you type, the more your text goes to the left, but eventually whatever the ending character is, it will line up with that right tab. So we're going to just look at some of those examples as we set up this first document. So um, I'm going to first of all choose a left tab stop and notice that the left tab stop looks like an arrow pointing to the right showing the direction the text is going to go. And then at one and a quarter inches, I'm going to do another right click. And this time I'm going to add a center tab stop. And notice how it looks kind of like a diamond. Very interesting. And then we're going to add another left tab stop at two and a fourth. So I'm going to right click and add a left tab stop. And then at four inches, I'm going to do a right tab stop. So I'm going to go to four inches, do a right click 
and do the right tab stop. And notice how the right tab stop has an arrow pointing to the left. So you kind of have to learn what those symbols look like so you understand what tab stops you have set. And then at five and five eighths or so, I can't quite see those lines. Um, I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to put another left tab stop. So now that I've set my tab stops, all I do is use the tab on my uh, keyboard and notice how now that insertion point lines up with that tab and I can type, say, um, first name. And then I can tab over again. Notice how it's lining up with that uh, center tab and I'm going to type MI. Tab again, I'm going to type last name. Tab again. This time I'm going to put joined, so that'll be the date that it joins. And notice that the text moved to the left, but the insertion point is lined up with that particular right tab. Then I'm going to tab over one more time and type title and press enter. Now I'm going to put in my first entry, so I'm going to tab one more time and I'm going to put in a name. Let's see, Tyrone for the first name. For the middle initial, I'm going to put A and notice how it lines up with that center. Last name, we'll put Snyder. Tab again. Now with joined, I'm going to type in a date. So watch what happens with this right tab. As I type in 2-4-1999, and so again, the end of that date is lining up with the right tab, and then I'm going to tab one more time and type in, oops. So what happened? Well, president was a little too wide here for uh, that particular column, and since I have so much space here, what I think I'm going to do is move my tab. Now notice I'm just clicking on the tab, and I'm dragging it over to the left. Oh, there's president. I need to do the same thing then for title. And I can line these up very easily by simply clicking and dragging uh, so that they fit better on the page. Now, I could also at some point decide that I want to remove a tab, and that's easy enough to do too. You simply click and drag down and drag the tab stop off of the ruler. So that is how you can set the tab stops first and then type in your document. For a second example, we have some text that's already been typed in. So we would just like to straighten this up a little bit. And it's sort of interesting that while name, address, and phone are fairly close together, if we look at the names and then how the addresses line up, um, you can kind of um, suppose that there is a tab between the names and the addresses. Now, on the other side of that, we have phone numbers, and that is where our lines get kind of really jagged and definitely not straight. So I would like to just put more room between the names and the addresses and then make those phone numbers all line up a little bit nicer on the page. So what we can do is really just select the whole thing here. Now I'm just going to click and drag to do my selecting. And then starting at the uh, one and a quarter, because really I can leave name just right on that left margin. But at one and a quarter, I'm going to right click and add a left tab. And that should move the address over. So yes, it's very nice, very straight. And we have a little more space between the name and the address. Well, then I can also then come over to the far right and add about, what's, what is that, six and three eighths or so? I can do a right click and add a right tab stop. So that moves all of the phone numbers over so that the far right side of those phone numbers line up very nicely with that right tab. Now, oddly enough, phone did not move. And it may be just the spacing of how all of that worked. So I may need to select phone or at least click in it and let's see if I can't put a center tab in just a little bit before six inches. And if that doesn't work, it may be that I really just don't have a tab there. So let me tab to that center tab now. Oh, yeah. And so now I have 
three very distinct columns, and they're all created by using the tabs after I typed in all of the text. Our third example uh, shows us a manually created table of contents, although this doesn't have to be a table of contents. It could be a menu, it could be a price list of some kind, where on the left-hand side you have an item, perhaps with a description, but then usually on the far right of the page you have more detailed information, say the price or the page number. In this case, um, I'm going to want to move the page numbers to the far right. So I'm going to select all of the existing text here. And then I'm going to go to the uh, ruler where I have all oh, about at six and a fourth, I call. Do a right click and add a right tab stop. And because I had tabs between the chapter names and the page numbers, those just automatically move just right on over, and they're all aligned with that right tab. Now that looks pretty good, but you have so much blank space in between. Now for those of you coming from Word, this is where you would have selected to use a dot leader, but Google Docs does not have that option, at least as of yet. So for us today, a workaround is to click to the right of chapter one here, and I'm just going to uh, space a couple times, and then I'm going to press period, space, period, space, period, space. So I'm essentially manually creating those dot leaders. I could also use dashes or underlines, but I think the periods are pretty standard. Then I'm going to use the shift and the right key on my keyboard to select the period space, period space, period space. Be sure to grab that last space. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to use control C to copy. And then I'm going to click just to the right of where I did all of my uh, selecting and copying. And now I'm going to use Control V. As I go across many times here to add in those dot leaders. The nice thing about using copy and paste is that at some point I'm going to stop with the dot leaders for page three and I can come down to chapter two. And always the point is mostly how do I um, get enough space here and line things up. But once my insertion point is lined up, then I can continue with the control V and do the next set of dot leaders as well. Yeah, let's not do that one. There, and so we could continue through that table of contents to have the dot leaders that are really helpful for our readers. So three different ways that we've seen now to add tab stops uh, manually, you can add the tab stops first. You can add them after you've typed something, or in this case, we've typed something and we've added in the tab stop, but then we've also added a dot leader. To learn even more, visit mymcpl.org forward slash online learning where you will find online resources that include Universal Class, LinkedIn Learning, and Learning Express Library. Be sure to join us each week as we present a variety of tech topics. Each week we premiere three new videos. You'll be able to find them at 1 o'clock on Wednesday and Friday or at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook at MCPL360, or if you prefer, be sure to subscribe to our MCPL MO channel on YouTube, where you'll be able to find our MCPL Consumer Technology Resources playlist.